Welcome to Diecast Restos. I'm Jason and this week I'm returning this Matchbox Renault 5 to factory condition. The model was introduced in 1978 and was in mainline production until 1984. In order to end up with one complete model, I'll be fusing together two battered castings today. On top of this one with its dented roof, yellowed windscreen and missing tow hook will be this a more complete looking model which was missing its tailgate. Both models suffered from severely bent axles. I'll take the choice parts from both as I attempt to make it look a little more like this, a mint example with Le Car decals from 1981. Here's the real Le Car with its decals, a first generation Renault 5. Black Square decals reproduced these so I'll be fitting them later on. The model didn't always feature the Le Car decals. It first appeared in metallic blue in 1978 without any at all. This had a silver painted base which incorporates the headlights and front and rear bumpers. The plastic interior moulding was tan and the tailgate a blue slightly darker than the body. For 1979 the first silver cars came out. These were identical to mine, save for the red A5 tampos and trim pattern that were located along the coach lines. These didn't always come with tampos fitted and if either of my models did have them, they've come off pretty cleanly. In 1980, the casting was recolored yellow. This could be found with either the red or tan interior and with the black or silver base casting. These had the first of the Le Car tampo issues in black. The following year, those tampos changed colour to red on silver like my example will become. Lesney stepped away from the Le Car design for 1982 with a green and black on white rally livery. This rally livery had black text and a number 4 on all sides, except for the rear. The tailgate was white on this model and it came with a tan interior. Spanning Lesney's 1983 bankruptcy, the model was withdrawn from the US market that year, continuing in the rest of world line only. It had a redesigned livery for 1984 as a red and yellow rally car, again on a white body. It exited the main line after this point, but the same design continued to appear in the two-pack line of 1985 and 1986, towing a motorcycle trailer. A blue R5 could be found towing a blue trailer in an earlier pack, while another had a caravan trailer. The casting was later produced in Bulgaria and came in a wide array of colours. I've added a classic Renault 5 ad in the video outro which is definitely worth sticking around to see. Renault started designing the 5 in the late 1960s as part of a plan to create a modern, stylish hatchback that could handle both city and highway driving. Its designer was Michel Bouet who designed the car in his spare time. He sadly died in 1972 shortly after the car was launched. Mechanically, the R5 shared many features with the 4, including a longitudinally mounted engine driving the front wheels and torsion bar suspension. On launch, engine options were 782 or 956cc overhead valve units, again borrowed from the 4 or the larger 8. Unlike the 4, the R5 had a monocoque chassis, helping to reduce weight. Initially, it had a dashboard mounted gear shift, but this was replaced by a floor mounted linkage by 1973. It was also one of the first cars to make use of plastic bumpers, helping to set an industry standard. As the years progressed, Renault added options including an automatic transmission in 1978 and a five door model was offered from 1979. Alongside this, Renault became one of the first manufacturers to produce a so called hot hatch with the 1976 Renault 5 Alpine. Otherwise known as the Gordini in the UK, this sporty model predated the Volkswagen Golf GTI by two months. The Gordini produced 92 horsepower from its 1.4 litre engine, 29 more than the previous range topper, the 5TS. A turbo version of this was launched in 1982 and it was produced up until 1984. This Alpine or Gordini turbo was entirely separate to the rally homologation Renault 5 turbo. 
The mid-engined R5 turbo came to fruition in 1980, but that is a story for another day. The name Le Car came about in 1977 after initial US sales of the 5 were disappointing. The new marketing campaign would highlight the car's sporty character, as seen in the San Francisco-based ad in the video outro. Despite this, the small car was not hugely popular there. Renault formed an alliance with AMC dealers to sell and service Le Car in 1979 to help market it further. The US even began receiving the new five-door model in 1980. Sales grew year on year from 6,800 in 1976 to 37,000 in 1982. But its final US model year would be 1983, when it was replaced by the larger Wisconsin-built Renault Alliance. The 5 would see a second generation in 1984. It was vastly popular in Europe, with it being the best-selling car in France from 1972 until 1986. Over 5.5 million were built during that span. So this was how my Matchbox 21F Renault 5 TL was looking earlier. It was one of two models I was working with to create one healthy example. Both had low ride heights due to squashed axles, and between them there was a dented roof, missing rear hatch, broken tow hook, yellowed and cloudy windscreen, and missing tampos. I always thought this model looked a little odd, but my opinion is completely changed as soon as you see it with its proper ride height. How much better does that look, riding taller as intended? I've repainted it silver for the body, black for the base, and coated over it with Mr. Hobby top coat. The excellent and accurate reproduction decals came from Black Square decals, and I'll leave a link to them in the video description. I swapped parts around to give this one the tow hook, clearer window piece, and tailgate. The axles have been straightened, and the wheels at the end of them treated with a new chrome topping. It feels a bit cheaty to utilize a donor, but here is one very healthy model out of two that were far from ship shape. Let me know your thoughts on the restoration in the comments, and leave a like if you're a fan of the result. Again, stick around to see the classic Le Car San Francisco ad, but all that leaves me to say is thanks for watching, and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.